Today's lecture is about random vibration, something that I think a number of you have been waiting for. We've spent quite a bit of time talking about single frequency at a time sign vibration, multiple frequencies at the same time complex vibration, where these frequencies were somewhat separated from each other. Now we're going to start talking about random vibration and the concept of a continuous spectrum. Here we have an example of random vibration. We can't see it or feel it, but it's there. We're looking back from a chase plane, and we're not aware of the high velocity airflow over all the surfaces causing random vibration, turbulent airflow causing the entire structure, every little bit of surface, to vibrate in a random manner. That vibration is transmitted internally into the aircraft, structurally and mechanically, causing everything on board to vibrate especially thin sections such as printed wiring cards. In this unique incident here, a very high velocity airplane was approaching and flying past us. Under just the right atmospheric conditions to cause air, cause moisture to condense into a very visible cloud. We're not so aware at that point that the aircraft is moving rapidly because the camera is panning and following the aircraft. Another instance of random vibration is turbulent flow, water flow, liquid flow inside a pipe. Turbulent flow gives us random vibration of the pipe itself. This is what the random vibration as measured on the pipe might look like. It certainly doesn't look like the sine vibration or the highly repetitive complex vibration that we've seen before. If I were to take a thousand pictures like this, they would all be different in some manner. Our first awareness of random vibration as an engineering problem was our early day difficulty in getting rockets to launch successfully. Our first launch attempts ended in disaster. Engines blew up, rockets blew up at ignition, at liftoff, and if by some chance they got into the flight a little way, they often went astray and had to be destroyed in flight. It wasn't for a number of years that we finally got a basketball-sized satellite in orbit. And things are certainly different now. Almost all launches are successful in, at the present time. It makes news when one doesn't fire successfully. Let's imagine that we're on the launch pad. The countdown is in progress. Five, four, three, two, one, ignition. At ignition, a very high velocity gas flow erupts from the rocket engines, mixes with stagnant air nearby, and produces intense noise. We're not so interested in the roar that spreads across the countryside and rattles dishes a few miles away. We're particularly interested in that energy that comes up and impinges upon the guidance part of the rocket, where it may cause trouble. So we've got several successful launches taking place here. Here's a still photograph of another launch and another day or night. A very good place not to be at liftoff is on the gantry. If the heat doesn't kill you, the intense noise will. At about the same time, the automobile industry was discovering that their vibration was random also. Whether we were on a Belgian block road, a paved surface, or off-road entirely, the vibrations were random. At that time, the instrumentation was so cumbersome that people had to use a van going alongside with a cable connected to the vehicle. Today, 
that sort of thing is easily gathered by much more compact equipment on the seat alongside the driver. Some of the off-road random vibrations are so severe that human drivers aren't employed. Instead, we have robots controlling the vehicle.